What's up guys? Long time no video. And I don't really have too much new HVAC stuff to post right now. But uh, anyway, a little update on my do-it-yourself homebrew solar system here at home. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I went ahead and bought this hybrid battery charger slash inverter for backup. It's supposed to be 5,000 watts max. I mean, it's physically not all that big of a system, but if you look at it, get it to focus. That is the max rating on it, evidently. But the cool thing about this one here is it's high voltage solar input, which is, so I'm gonna keep my solar array the way it is, 330 volts DC. And that way I don't have to have beefy heavy duty wiring for, you know, the 5,000 watts worth of solar that's back there. Be able to keep it 12 gauge or whatever and run and just run it in here, what used to go to my system outside. And then the battery connection is 48 volts, which is very typical and nominal. And it's got these huge ass lugs in there for that. And it's just got the 120 volt input and output. Uh, just an Amazon special. Seems like it can be configured the way I I want it. You know, you could configure it several ways, you know, as it act as a UPS, which means it would like use utility power as priority to keep the batteries charged. Or you can run it as I would do it, where it only charges batteries when you have sun, keeps the batteries charged, and uh, just for battery backup purposes. So you can kind of switch it around, you know. How you want it to work it does have some dry contacts i noticed if you had like an electric start uh, generator you know you can hook that up to your ac input and this thing when the batteries got low could could tell a, a generator to start things like that so kind of cool a prop so i won't be really having the uh, solar hooked up the way it was to the variable frequency drive to my heat pump like i did plus i Pretty sure I'm not going to connect to that because I don't want any ground loops or anything weird where it causes a short just blows the thing up. So let me go outside and continue from there. Okay, it's starting to get dark right now. Yeah, there's the cat. So I'm going to show you that in a second. So I've already disconnected the uh, high voltage solar uh, battery backup system I had there. So, and that's just turned off. And so basically, my solar. Is this connected into the heat pump still like it was originally before I ever hooked up any batteries? So I'm starting to build a 48 volt pack. It's going to stack up out here and go through the wall to the new hybrid charger inverter that I got. But check this out when I was disconnecting this, I knew this was going to happen if I neglected it. I never had a charge controller hooked up to disconnect the batteries. Once the heat pumps weren't running regularly enough to keep the batteries from overcharging, it wasn't an issue through the summer, but I knew when the summer really ended, that would happen, and it did. So I didn't pay attention to it. I knew this was gonna happen. Come out here, open the cover. One pack of my batteries is totally fucked. I mean, they're fucked. Those batteries are just totally swollen up. So much, I couldn't even get all the wiring out of there because it just melted the batteries around them. Just totally, absolutely foobarred fucked up beyond all recognition, right? This is the way the battery used to look. This is one that the terminal got foobarred. Anyway, I still have, you know, a couple other packs of them. Oops, I have stuff on top of that. But uh, this pack here, I'm in the process of disconnecting. I got a little bit of water down in here somehow still, even though I put them in totes. So it's probably part of their demise. So these batteries actually look really good still. Like I said, I have these, which I've been stacking in there. And then those over there. And what I was doing today was I cleared out this area, you know. And then underneath my heat pump for my water heater, I was going to, I got this rack. It's going to be about, you know, how high. And it's putting groups of four in a series together. So that's 48 volts. And then here's like another group of four. And then I just parallel them, right? And then I'm going to have these output wires so I could just run each group up to a disconnect. I got some terminal blocks for them. So I was gonna go, so this is like one, two sets of 48, one, two sets of 48, just keep doing that. But I got this far and my friend's over and he's like, he's built, he's the one that built like some um, lithium ion packs and stuff, lithium ion phosphate packs and stuff for his other buddies for solar stuff and everything. And he has some, so now he might be able to work out a deal using some of those. He said they had charge densities way better than these. 
I'm like, well, shit, so I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> I was on my way to building that up today. So now I might not use my lead acid, you know. And these are made for UPS or whatever. But, so, might have a change of plans on that. But these batteries will not go to waste, even if I do use the lithium ion or lithium ion phosphate, depending on which battery packs I get from them to put on that new device is a I have a, a 2200 watt you know server room grade UPS in my garage it has uh, groups of 10 batteries for 120 volt DC that plugs into that that works I and mean, it's got some of these batteries in it um, when I got these batteries these were used batteries if you uh, remember from a while back like a year ago um, I'll just uh I can repurpose these batteries for stuff like that, add some more groups of 10s, maybe stack them in my garage or whatever carefully and just tie it into that UPS. That UPS is pretty badass. Uh, and it's made for uh, lead acid only. And then I have two or three other, you know, uh, random U small UPSs that you put like on a computer, you know, where I have one that's where my uh, internet, my cable modem is and my main router is and stuff that uh, keeps that online when the power goes out so I can always add you know stack just parallel them up you know some of those UPS's are 12 volts and I have like one or two that's 24 volts doesn't matter these batteries are they're made for these batteries so I'll probably use up some maybe build some stacks up that are external to those UPS's and just stash them throughout different points in the house so I can use these batteries for different things so they won't go to waste but if I don't wind up using his you know lithium ion or lithium ion phosphate whatever he's got you know for this then i'll continue building some out here but he claims you know that some of those batteries he has might be like a four to one or five to one um energy density you know ratio compared to lithium ion i mean compared to these lead acid so a stack like that high you know of those batteries he has might equal a stack this high you know of lead acid so let's see how that goes this thing here, I used, it actually was cooling my garage, my, you know, you guys saw the Fredericks that I converted, tore off the top half. I just got things stored on it right now, and I made it into a split system with the uh, high wall. That cooling worked all the way till I unplugged it. I uh, reconnected a missing high voltage wire I left off and tried to turn it on heating, but it, I think it had a fault, and it was saying, like, something about one of the sensors being faulty in there, so I don't know what's going on with that. Or maybe it's one of the sensors that only needed for heating but not for cooling. So I don't know if I feel like taking the high wall apart to make the heat work in there. If the cooling works, I'll just probably leave it the way it is. But uh, the deal is, when I do redo this thing with my battery back up in there, probably won't tie in my heat pumps anymore. So they won't get the benefit of pulling off of the solar. So I'll lose a little bit on that, but uh, the thing I might hook up to it, if I start using my garage a little more, you know, after work, and I want to kick the AC on, you know, is I might just uh, go 120 volts output on that uh, ba battery backup thing I'm adding, uh, step up transformer to 230 volts into this, and it basically the solar will be charged up battery banks that will run this basically off grid, or and also off grid, you know, if our power goes out, have a place to go hide, you know when the power doesn't work and something i probably should do i guess is if i ha once i get this thing up and running is take that server ups out of the garage and put it some like upstairs in the house or something like that with some batteries and uh that way if the power goes off we just plug an extension cord or something and run some stuff on that side of the house i don't know if i would have if i would have known better when this house had up that sheetrock opened up for uh fixed when they had that water leak i would have ran some uh dedicated circuits for uh ups circuits you know just like you do in a hospital or whatever you know puts throw some red outlets on the wall that would have been awesome but uh, one more thing just to mention people keep asking well what are those up on the wall these have nothing to do with my projects these are solar city which is now owned by tesla this is on grid solar that's up on my roof you know that's tied grid tie doesn't do your jack shit if the power goes out it only it just works by lowering your electric bill that's all it does um if shit hits the fucking fan type of moment i will have more high voltage banks you can see these are running 
I think these are running around 300 volts. This one says 357. Depends on how they strung them up on the roof, but it's the same voltage range as you know what my deal inside is. If I ever bought one more of those things later, just have it. Shit hit the fan kind of thing. I could always, you know, take the solar arrays and put them into those things. You know, they'll be basically run off grid. Anyway, that's just speaking out my butt. You know, if you ever get a shit hits a fan, but who knows what'll happen to this country in another couple years if everything goes down. So, uh, and then the one more thing update before I end the video is uh, gotta get my ass doing it, man. But. These are going to come out, man, especially the old Goodman, which means I'm going to have to buy another air handler for that one. But these are going to get removed. And I think I've already talked about it before. Let's go over here. I remember I scored this stuff. So got these two tall carrier condenser units. This one had the panel all loose when I got it and had wires hanging out, so I'm pretty sure something was wrong with it. They don't remember what was wrong with it, you know, but they were four port. Yeah, one, two, three, four. I stole one coil E, electronic expansion valve coil off of that to make a... It's actually working on the Frederick. I <laughs> rewired it. But anyway... Uh, oh, wow. The plate is wet in here. There's some uh, schematics I made and stuff in here. The uh, I probably won't be able to use any of this stuff, so that's a rotary. I would like to. These are three ton units, but I but think I'm going to do is just totally gut this stuff out. Re, re, I'm going to reuse the reversing valve, and I'm going to put in my scroll um, compressors I got that are in that Lennox unit over there, and I got one more scroll compressor I got over there for it. So I'm going to take all this out, and it's going to it's just going to be a uh, just like a regular condenser and I'm gonna I'm gonna run make my own controller just to run these fans that are in here it's, and, and uh, it'll be nice and quiet with the compressor all in there and then it's also gonna it's gonna this is only this depth is like half of what my units are so it's gonna save me a good foot or so uh, where my RV gate is over there and that's that's part of the goal. Plus they'll look pretty cool when they're done. They'll look, they'll match. It'll still be Frankenstein units. So that I fuck, let's put that on. So it'll still be Frankenstein units. <laughs> so yeah. So those two units I think will be on my house. Don't know what to experiment or do on that thing later, but that's a actual air handler three ton three ton those were those were exchanged out units so it's got to be something wrong with them i don't know someday i might actually hook them up and try it out but these ones here i think i'm just going to put scrolls in them and just make them be my central air at my house because right here you know these units stick out quite a bit from that gate there so when i pull that 18 foot trailer back in here it's it's real tight I'm trying to miss that block wall over there but yet miss you know running into these damn things it just barely fits through here i also got to uh, one of these days get over here and redo my this is kind of foobar the way i did it i mean it works but i added this rv gate there wasn't one here there was just a small gate right here even though previous owner put all this concrete brick back here so I'm, i need to pull these out carefully cut it and put a nice I don't know, some two by 12 or something simple with a bunch of lags and everything and build it up strong and then anchor my gate to that. That'll free up about six inches right there. So it won't be when the gates open that. So I can hug this wall a little more. And then the slim carrier units, when I put them in here, they'll only be about this far out from the wall. So I'll actually uh, have enough room that I actually maybe leave the Can-Am on that trailer sometimes and just actually back up the trailer onto the truck. Right now, it's so tight that I push the trailer by hand and I still run into the wall and shit, so there's no doing it on the truck. So anyway, that's life and uh, 
got to get on it. Uh, and also, um, this heat pump, like you guys saw last year, I had it on here. When I made it, I never put a defrost circuit on it, and it froze up just a few times. Well, it's done that once this year to where I come out, and this is just frosted over and wasn't heating up the water very well. And all I do is just unplug it and flip the breaker back on for the water heater to use its internal, you know, elements. So, and I just had it unplugged for like a week, and then it dried out a little bit again. And we get down to like, you know, 40 degree mornings, you know. It doesn't run enough that it stays froze up. It actually hasn't froze back up last week since I turned it back on. So that's good. So anyway, hope to get some videos just coming out again and get some stuff. It'll be really cool once I start building up the next Frankenstein units. You guys going to like that, especially if I uh, get those fans working. Well, I'm pretty sure I could get those fans working, but... I'll have to uh, make my own electronics and adapters and all sorts of shit. There's a lot I got to get done before summer starts. Got to do this when it can be a part, you know. So, got to just got to get motivated. So, with that, catch you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't slack. Get it done. Catch you guys later.